Greetings and salutations all you hardcore MMA fans out there. What are we seeing right here? Well, if you stick with me, we will get back to that in just a little while. Welcome to another edition of MMA Technical Analyst Breakdown. As always, I'm your host, Dan the Wolfman, guys. I'm going to get that ready to replay it for you one more time in a second uh, later. So what we'll be covering this week is, of course... UFC Fight Night 134 and I'm also going to try to get to PFL4 guys hopefully you enjoy this I'm an OG gangster from the early NHB days of fighting when I started training with Dan Severn Tank Abbott so I go back a long 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 time in this sport so pay attention boys and girls um, hopefully we can wrap this up and get a full video before the 25 or 26 minutes uh, kind of stop the way my camera set up for this quality of video so uh, we'll try and get to it um, guys I'll, I'll give you a little bit on all the UFC stuff and then we'll try to get into PFL and I want to cover this awesome submission you just saw you all that was not a rear naked choke it's always called called wrong you guys ain't gonna understand it's actually something kind of boss and brutal and kind of myself I've really pushed it out there I really modified it naturally back in 2009 I've had tons of videos on it uh, we'll talk more about that awesome submission later so keep uh, up for that um, also guys some guys are starting to pay attention to this a little bit so I'm gonna keep it up hopefully you guys like it thumbs up share uh, you know, retweet if you can. Anyone help me out? Um, Ray, Seafood, Ray Seafood, president of PFL, uh, liked some of the stuff that I've had going on and comment, commentating about that submission on Twitter uh, with one of my videos that I've had on for uh, forever and a day. And then um, also Rich, the mat matchmaker of Bellator, um, has liked some of the vids on Facebook. So, you know, Scott Coker, I know he sees some of my stuff. UFC, really don't know. Um, haven't been in contact with anyone there for a while and just not living near any events. Um, but, you know, hopefully uh, people pay attention. Chael Sonnen last week uh, liked uh, my tweet out to him. Chael, if you're really interested, maybe uh, now that you booked that date, I think October 13th, versus Fedor Emelianenka uh, in Bellator. Congrats, New York City, I believe. If you want Wolfman out there September 1st, you got as a sparring partner, you got to let me know soon if uh, if you think that would benefit you so I can give 30 days notice where I am and hop on a plane, brother. Um, okay, so guys, UFC, we'll start with some of the early prelims when we mention a couple of them. I'll scoot this back just a little bit. We got uh, at light heavyweight, Raykick versus Ledette. It was a third round mauling by... Reekick, and I don't know why this is a little bit down than it was when I set it up. Um, Reekick was very strong, fast, cardio, said he pushed a cardio pace like Cain Velasquez, and he did. This guy's coming down from heavyweight, big, strong, fast guy. Most guys at light heavyweight are not very fast. They're plotting footwork, they're not very mobile, they're really heavyweight guys that don't want to take heavyweight punches. And so they cut 30 pounds to get down. Um, but this guy is that big, but still maintained his speed and his pace. Well, at least over there. I believe this was in Hamburg, Germany. So good and talk, everybody. Um, and let's just say that always affects things. People sometimes perform better overseas than they do in the U.S. and established commissions. Let's just say that. So I don't know, um, you know, I'm not saying anyone in particular, but in general, sometimes you see better performances, uh, though we didn't really see that. This event uh, with a lot of decisions. Um, however, uh, this guy, Reykik, uh, is someone that definitely, definitely wants. The only other thing on the prelims worth noting uh, was Demir Hadzovic landed a rare inside crescent kick in the third round of his fight versus Nick Hines and won a split decision mostly with a good long stinging jab. Um, but crescent kicks, you know, aren't used a lot. He even did it from the back leg. Um, you know, I've only seen it really well, maybe like four times in MMA. One knockout in England, a couple times in UFC, Anderson Silva in the UFC a couple times. Um, Adesanya did an inside crescent kick to the front inside of the knee front leg. I do actually use that sometimes. Um, so you don't see that much. Anyway, next up, uh, Hankerset versus Mark Driacasi, Nisra Hecperest. 
Okay, round one, really good pressure from the southpaw. Hink press, a lot of double forearm guard, just always backing him up, 10-9. Uh, in my opinion, round two, more forward pressure, double forearm guard, eating it and staying at, at that distance to pressure the kind of rangier kickboxer that wants to use his explosiveness and outside kicking. Basically got a knockdown and ground pound at the end of the round, probably a 10-8 round. Round three, more of same uh, little uppercut drops. Uh, Diacosti for a bit, kind of off the clinch, a uh, little dirty box, slipped it in. Some good calf kicks as well. Round three, 10 9. So uh, we may start seeing more of the double form guard. We'll talk about that later the, uh, in the main event. In MMA, as well as 52 style skull and crossbones, we've been seeing my uh, Facebook friend, Romero. Never met him in person, but I've shared some of my. Wait, wait, 52 videos out there. Look at my compilation. We're going to see some, some more skull and crossbones type, type stuff, guys. Peering out here, coming over, and elbowing, and, and coming with that, that back hammer fist, upper bopper punch, and stuff like that. Uh, look at my brand new 22 blocks of drill video. You can make that to 24 or 26. I'll probably brief them in the future because um, I just had a beginner with me, but uh, guys are giving it a lot of thumbs up. It's something all martial arts should uh, really do. And uh, Hank Perez does remind me of Kelvin Gastelum, so I think this guy could go some places, guys. And uh, we're in my British UFC shirt now since I had, of course, here Goddard and uh, Dan Hardy, who I used to roll with quite a bit back in the day, 10th Planet. Um, you know, I used to roll with Rogan. For years, a couple years, Hardy for a couple years, um, spar Jason Chambers late MMA. You know, if there's ever a throwdown between MMA commentators, I commentated the first five live pancreas events on UFC Fight Pass. I think I can hold my own. Uh, I've gone against heavyweight guys like Stuart, Stuart in Japan. You can see me sparring him, uh, cut kicking him on his butt. Uh, I've rolled the TK a few times. So I've gone with about all the commentators, and you know, I feel pretty well. Uh, with, with how I would do. Not against all the top UFC guys nowadays, getting old, but because in a commentator's battle, battle royale, I think I might do pretty well. Um, you never know. Um, okay, guys. Danny Roberts versus David Zawada. This one's at Walter Waite. And uh, David Roberts won split decision by sticking the ancient technique of face punching. Uh, over the slop dish, you su um, sub attempts. I call it slop jitsu because there was a lot of mistakes. Like like newbie jujitsu people go wild for that kind of fight, but there were submission attempts and darts from turtle and stuff. But like a, a lot of like giving up, and which gets you punched in the face. So hence the uh, kind of slop jitsu. Um, no offense, Matt. It just you, you should be more. Uh, positioning and wanting to be on top more, and sometimes the European guys don't really understand that part of the game. They they do their kickboxing and sparring, MMA sparring, and think that's MMA, and then they kind of like do their play jujitsu, and then they try to do their play jujitsu in the octagon. Gets you punched in the face. Okay, so Marson, I say that as a black belt, NBJJ, and under Gene LeBeau and Boker so I think there's only three in the world, guys. Okay, so Marson Tybra versus Steven Struve at heavyweight. Round one, Tiber busier and late double leg takedown. Round two, Marson early takedown passes to side uh, off an armbar attempt with him lifting his hips up, rolling back with toes through the cage. Uh, got warned by it by the uh, ref, uh, did Struve, and then he got side mount on Struve, landed nasty elbow, I think right elbow, um, splitting way open the lip of Steven Struve. The skyscraper, and then Struve quickly got the heck out of Dodge with the right underhook escape, first side underhook escape. Um, then, um, then the Struve right back on the feet got a front kick to the chin, really nice front kick. We saw a couple of those tonight as well, splitting the, those guards, those high guards, and a double lift off the cage by Marson, uh, grabbing under the butt. You usually, want to like grab and butterfly grip if you can reach. Lifting the very tall 6'11 and a half Struve off his feet and dumping him down, getting aside. And round three, eventually got another double lift under the butt off the cage, and Struve elbow escapes back to guard. Easy, unanimous decision for Marcin Tibera. Tibera. Sorry with the pronunciation tonight, guys. Um, 
So, yeah, I, I kind of wanted to see better from him, honestly. Like, beating Struve ain't easy. Beating someone with huge reach is never easy. Um, at one point, I, I fought in the first Daito Juka World Championships, the very first World Championships in Japan in 2001, hoping I would face Semi Shield, actually. And then hung out with Shield, nice guy, I got a picture with him. We hung out with a ninja festival in Edo prefixture, you know, reminiscent of the Edo period, uh, but his, his uh, form and wrist was all taped up, so he kind of fight. I'm sure there was some politics involved with that as well. But, um, you know, I was actually hoping to take on Struve back, or not Struve, but the semi Shield back in the day, three-time K1 champion, who actually started in Daido Juko. Um, I digress. Okay, so anyway, Abu Azatar versus Itor Miranda is next at middleweight. Azatar fires lots of power shifts, step out hooks. You step with the right foot, boom. You start a lot of combinations that way. I use a lot. Also big overhand rights, throwing yourself off balance, the big left hook. Kind of like a lot of Arab fighters do and Russian fighters do. Um, then Alpha Male started doing it. Um, just kind of that way of throwing yourself, your body weight, your momentum into your shots. Um, they don't always want to do that, but sometimes breaking that rhythm is very good to do. Obviously, we talked about that last week, and I had videos on that back in 2012, I think, quite a few of them, before anyone in, in UFC was doing it. Okay, so the power shift out hook. Uh, he did a lot of that, especially in the first round. Um, and then Blitz is off using it. Miranda sits back, reading it for a while, and then gets a double off of a low kick. Late scramble off bottom. In the chaos, though, Anzatar wins the round. Like, the more technical fighter seems to be Murata, and, and Anzatar, let's just call him Abu. Abu starts winning uh, the ends of each round. Round two, by heart and, and grit and hustle. Um, round two, round is still not adjusting. He should have been throwing straight one twos, aiming towards the chest. Young fighters out there to the chest and throw there. You got a guy shifting on you, coming in on blitzes and stuff. Stick them. Let them run themselves into spears, aiming to their upper chest, and they're kind of changing levels and stuff, especially. Uh, like alpha male guys, you want to um, aim to the chest of the throat area. And let, let them spike themselves right on your straight punch. Bam, okay? Um, maybe some intercepting knees and uppercuts as well. Even uppercut to the swole plexus works really nice uh, occasionally if you're timing right and you don't get popped in the face. Okay, round two. Um, round is, he was an adjusting. Uh, and then he attempts a head outside single. First he gets stuffed, and then Abu messes up, pulling the leg over without hooking the far leg with his leg. He could have actually went into a really nice banana split. There's been one nice submission that way in MMA. And um, so Abu messed up. He needs some work on his grappling. Um, gets mounted, scrambles up from the arm triangle attempt. Rana brings him back down, mounts again, and right as he mounts, Abu bridges him over. Abu steals the second round again. So, little positional mistakes with big explosions uh, by Abu st start winning him this fight over and over again, stealing the rounds. Round three, Abu gets takedown. Round gets close to an armbar. Comes out on top and almost inverted um, rock hold Tim Bosch situation. Inverted triangle hugging the waist. Um, I have a video hitting that at one point. And. Um, Gets side control, eventually does Miranda, and then attempts to mount, but as his knee's coming over, gets bridged over yet again. <sighs> I expected more from Vitor Miranda. Um, he couldn't deal with the chaos. It's like he wants to kickbox spar, speed, kickbox match, speed, and the off-rhythm and blitz attacks that are modern, or the aggression that was always MMA fighting, NHB days, going back to Tank Abbott, my old sparring partner, coming in to, to, to take your ass out. Uh, he, it's like he can't deal with that chaos. So I don't know what he's doing in his training since he has all these ranks and different styles, right? He has like four belts and a uh, silver glove and uh, Savat, I think they said, all this stuff. I'm like, well, dude, like, um, I, I, he just should be able to deal with that kind of aggression better. So you know, unanimous decision, uh, maybe a bit of home, how do we say this, home advantage for the people that have moved and uh, taken over Germany. Uh, okay, next co-main event, Glover Teixeira versus Corey Anderson at light heavyweight, double leg against Cage and riding by Anderson and proved boxing round 110-9, round two, bad shots, Glover bending at the waist, trying to show his age, a lot of bending over at the waist. 
uh, reaching, uh, uh, diving at the mat, kept hurting Glover quite a bit. Corey Sprawls and higher guys. Let's see if that helps a little bit. Um, Corey sprawls and locks up Schultz control, turns the corner, tries to uh, kind of hike that, that leg at an Iowa ride for a second, uh, but Glover did a good job, got back up. So look at my Schultz choke uh, videos from Headlock Series, Chain Series, Front Attacks, very popular. Uh, then later he gets a single leg ride. Of, Bit popular video on that as well, going in all our kind of 10th uh, Planet E type stuff, T um, truck and twister and all that. And then ends with ground pound and half guard. Uh, Corey Anderson looks darn good, especially late call up fight. Round three, just better mobility, faster hustle, and better wrestling by Corey Anderson. Look really good. 30 27, unanimous decision. Corey Anderson looks sharper. Good hustle, good cardio for a late call up fight. He was breathing heavy long after in the interview, which tells me that he wasn't in totally awesome shape. He was in really good shape, and the guy hustles and uses all his energy in a fight. A lot of guys like myself, even now that I've gotten older, like I don't hustle enough. I'm like, oh man, I was saving even in jujitsu training. I'm like, I was saving myself and I should have pushed more. Uh, Corey Anderson, I, I think he's going to start being more consistent, do better and better and better. Um, it's a big step back from going from Glover number three to the guy I first talked about, Ray Kick at light heavyweight. But if they can't find another fight, that, that would be pretty interesting. Okay, um, he probably deserves better than that. But, uh, you know, if the, another big fight doesn't come around right away, that could, they could do that. Main event, Shogun Hua versus Anthony Smith, light heavyweight. I'm a huge fan of Shogun. One minute in, a uh, couple whippy style Russian long hooks. Uh, Fedor style, uh, landed by Smith, and a front kick to the chin, up through that, splitting that guard, right? So uppercuts, flying knees, high knees, uh, front kicks to the face, so if a guy's got a double forearm guard, we talked about that earlier, was used so effectively in an earlier fight, now we see it, Shogun Hua, the problem is it ties up both hands, the front kick really hurts him under the chin, and then an overhand follows it up by Smith, and then Smith realizes how bad he's hurt, and actually Hua takes a couple steps in, which he should have backed off. But he's that old pride never die, kind of, kind of, you know, die by your sword kind of guy. And um, then Smith just blitzed him on the feet with tons of punches and elbow. Uh, he was already basically knocked out on the feet, and right as it should have been stopped. Smith's lines of elbows, always been deadly with knees and elbows. Um, and then maybe he finally kills pride, <laughs> so Shogun's dead. Um, not literally, uh, thankfully, but but you know, um, as you get older and the wars build up, uh, the chin's just not going to be, uh, you know, I said earlier, I'm sure dog that Smith was going to win, and, and Smith won. Okay, so um, I've watched Smith since victory, guys. I just put a video, a short clip of a video I did two and a half years ago, talking about Smith and victory, uh, Street Fighter esque. Um, Killing Josh Near in a rematch with elbows and knees, uh, holding his arm against elbow on him. You can see my video. We talked about that two and a half years ago. So Anthony Smith, congrats! And uh, you know, now that this guy has beaten really big names by KO, starting with Hector Lombard, who's still kind of a big name, was a long, long time Bellator champion, was a big signing at the time for UFC. Then he KOs Rashad in what 57 seconds, I think, with a, a pike knee. I wish that his structure get broken, don't know why. Um, and then now uh, with Hua at 129 in the first round with an elbow, punch blitz and elbow, and then calls out Gustafson right away, uh, you could really start push, pushing Anthony Smith, especially if he beats, if he gets a Gustafson fight and manages to beat Gustafson. Even if not, if he can make it a pretty good, exciting fight, gritty war, you could really start pushing this guy, kind of like uh, taking out big names like Calvin Gaston who honestly should have been pushed even more than he was for taking out the, the killer's role of legends that Gaston did. So, Anthony Smith, congrats. Um, guys, that covers it for UFC. Let's get into PFL really fast. Let's see if I can get a few minutes in before this video ends and has to go to another video. PFL heavyweight Alex Nicholson versus Philip Lins. Lins fighting technical on the outside with lots of one-twos to the body. Frustrates Nicholson. Nicholson lands a blitz starting with flying knee. Hulks up, starts on huge big haymakers. Um, and and um, 
Lynn's runs away, and then finally he gets back in the cage. He's like, you know what? Okay, I'll hook up too. Bang it, bang it. And he starts hulking up back, and uh, it bites uh, Nicholson in the butt, drops Nicholson, and then a few hammer fists finish him off. Ernie wins five points for his second round finish, three for his first fight, five for this fight. I've talked about PFL in the past, guys. If you're not familiar with what's going on with the PFL, with the uh, point structure, and uh, actual, like, real tournament system, sports system, true sports system, look into it. Okay, featherweight Steven Siler, who I've interviewed before, nice uh, guy, versus Alexander Almeida. Siler in his first round PFL won by triangle. Almeida in his first round PFL fight won by a swim move turnover armbar in the first round. So this was, you know, grappler's delight. Siler actually drops and tags him with the right hand, and he jumps on a guillotine, and Mergliata incorrectly stops the fight by technical submission. Um, he did kind of flop on his side, which is also a technical defense to the UFC. We originally saw Tito Ortiz do that, and most guys still don't know that. And before you're going out, boom, just get wrist control, flop on your side, go in a sleeping baby, just like you would cocoon if you're getting stopped by multiple people. Um, and uh, uh, anyway, another bad, this happened in earlier PFL as well. One of these horrible early stoppages. Next up, uh, Siler, this is big too, Siler's way ahead of 12 points when everyone else is like 6 now, or 5, or 4, or 3. So put Siler way ahead in the points right here. Heavyweight, Francis Amir Barrasso versus Jack May, 6'8". Um, both guys first round finishes in their first fight, May by knee, and then kick to the liver after that. In this fight, Barrasso catches a leg kick and takes May easily down on the guard. Totally easy passes in half. Thocks up an arm triangle totally easily you know, when May totally completely messes up and gives it away like a total beginner. And then lets him completely pass the side and just finishes it. I don't know what the heck I was watching. Um, someone needs to work on their, their grappling. Um, and I've watched, I, I was curious, I went and watched May at a small event back in the day just to, you know, kind of check him out. Um, featherweight, Andre Harrison versus Naz Melagiri. Other than one nice burst by Harrison, the second round of fairly lackluster decision, mostly on the feet for him. And the main event, featherweight, which you saw earlier, Lance Palmer versus Chinese Sonda fighter Church Song. Lance Palmer, four time All American, alpha male. Round one, ground and pound half guard. Round two, ground and pound half guard. Round three, we, this awesome single leg hook ride from the back, which I've talked about, locking that hip, to Exorcist Neck Crank, which really I had originally seen by Boss Rutten kind of once long ago, uh, 2009. Didn't, you just kind of vaguely saw it. I taught it my way was quite different, actually kind of better. Instead of the guy falling, like Boss kind of showed the hip, how to use your butterfly hook and kick his hip or direct him the other way. So he's it's actually a neck, just called the neck crank exercise, neck crank, but really neck crank and spine twist. So you're doing this counter rotation on the upper and lower halves of the body. Um, uh, great stuff. It's a very rare submission. The first one to do it actually was Shinya Oka, Dream 17, who saw it from my mutual friend Ryan Bow. Um, face who shared it on um, who I filmed the original video with he sh shared it on Facebook and Shinya Aoki so all that, of course I rolled with Aoki years, years later at Evolve you can see him giving me a little shout out um, also used by in the very last seconds by Frankie Egger, Egger versus Cub Swanson and used I think two other times in one by a teammate of, of Shinya later on uh, another black belt, just can't think of it. Ishii? E Ishii? Isai? Isai? Something like that. Can't really uh, nail down his name right now. But anyway, guys, I searched the neck crank in case this hasn't finished yet. I'll show you it one more time. Hopefully, uh, Ray Sifu has been supporting me, so uh, fair use. And with some support from President. Ray Sifu, Exercise Neck Crank. Guys, thumbs up, like, subscribe, support me. Thank you, everybody. Dan the Wolfman signing out, and I will catch you on the flip side.